Facebook, what's going on? You know who it is, you know what it is. All right, man, um, I'm going to just give my take on this whole shit with Miley Cyrus saying that whatever she done with rap and rap is too explicit for her and all that type of shit. Well, you know what? Um, I'm not going to blame her. I'm going to blame basically the people who's really to blame for this, which is the black community for always being accepting to anybody that comes in. They want to use hip hop to gain a little popularity and boost their uh, Hollywood stature and then you know basically abandon the black community this has been done on so many occasions you know with culture vultures from you know Mark Wahlberg coming across as a rapper to you know Justin Timberfake to um, you know Madonna, Pink it started with a lot of these people they do this all the time you are the guys that defend these people when we say you know when we tell you, be cautious of these people, man, because a lot of these people are culture vultures. Miley Cyrus' career was suffering. She had just made 18. She didn't know what direction she wanted to go. So she decided to, like, start working with all these rappers, being in all these rap videos, acting like she was down with the cause. Keep in mind, she started as a country singer anyway. You know, her dad wrote this song called Achy Breaky Heart or some shit like that. So, what did you expect? The only person that stayed true today to R&B, from my knowledge, who still continues to do R&B right now, who's, you know, is John B. He stayed true to his R&B roots, never really changed. Same thing with Tina Marie. She stayed true. And Tina Marie said they offered her several chances to go pop, and she said, no, I wasn't going to do it. I'm staying true to R&B. But like I said, you go back to the 80s with Madonna. That's what Madonna did. She had a black sound. And then when she sold enough records and and her popularity went up, she totally abandoned the black community where she got her start from. And then when people call her on that, then they want to play these games like, oh, what are you talking about? Oh, that wasn't my intentions. Yes, it was. We are the ones that do this. Like I said, um, I'm not accepting to all these Caucasian rappers that come out. People say, yeah, he cool. It's very few white rappers records that I bought. Now, I bought a few of Eminem's records like when he first came out because that's only because he had the backing of Dr. Dre. But then Eminem, his lyrics just got a little too out there for me. Because as I said before, Eminem got away with saying a lot of shit that a black rapper couldn't say and he capitalized off it let a black rapper come out making songs about killing his mama and all that type of shit and you know he wouldn't have no career you know the black community would be outraged and they would try to take him down then you had all these other people then you had Iggy Azalea with her fake ass another one that you know what I'm saying that black people was back and forth many until she kept opening her mouth saying stupid shit. It got to the point to where T.I. had to distance himself from her. When she came out the gate on the Instagram talking about me and my niggas. Then she did some kind of interview talking about she earned the right to use the N-word. So, you know, black people had had enough of her. So artists like Jill Scott and other people, they shut her ass down. Now, nobody ain't even thinking about Iggy Azalea. Because she got too, you know what I'm saying? She got too cocky. You know? I, I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's the thing with these culture vultures, these Caucasian culture vultures, we have to always keep our eye open. Same thing, you know what I'm saying? Same thing with all these dudes like Robin Slick, Slick Robin Thick, whatever you want to call him. You know, I got that from Superboy. He called him Robin Slick. Now, Robin Thicke, you know, as you guys know, he got sued for millions by Marvin Gaye's family for basically making his rendition of, um, I just, I'm here to party or whatever. And it was called Blurred Blurred Lines. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Blurred Lines didn't sound that much like Marvin Gaye's. I'm just, I just want to party. But they had a little bit of similarities, but, you know. Hey, it is what it is. 
So this shit about Miley Cyrus don't surprise me. That's what a lot of these people do. And then you, and then these are the same black people that bash them when they say, "Oh, well, I kind of like I'm gonna leave the R&B thing, I'm gonna leave the hip hop thing alone," and saying that, "Oh, well, they abandoned in the black community." Well, you the ones that was giving them the hood stamp of approval. So don't you know you did this to yourself? And that's what I'm saying. We gotta be cautious of these people and stop like letting everybody in through the door and shit. Because this happens all the time. This has been happening for years. You know, you'll get these dudes that will come with one like what you would call R&B song, you know, hip hop song or whatever, hip hop feel song to it. They blow up and they go back to making whatever they started off making or they'll just go a totally different direction. Now, I will say this. In being fair to Pink, Pink said when she came out, she didn't want to be marketed as a R&B artist. And she said that on several occasions. She said it was L.A. and Babyface or L.A. Reed that made her put out that first album where it was pretty much an R&B album. So, in fairness to Pink, she said she, she was forced to do it. But then you got these other people that come out the gate trying to pull this shit. And like I say, soon as they get movie, you know, multi-million dollar movie deals or, you know, or they start selling a mass amount of records, which record sales ain't going to never be what they was like 10, 15 years ago. Them days of just certain artists coming out the gate selling two, three million records, them days is over because it's too easy to get people's music now. But anyway, man, I just wanted to get my thoughts on Miley Cyrus, man. Like I said, don't. You shouldn't be too surprised about this happening. You know, I expected her to do this because I've seen this too many times. I've been around. I've seen this go on forever with these culture vultures, you know, pipping the black community. And this is why I've been trying to say on other various videos that the black community is easy to manipulate and easy to, you, you know, infiltrate. Because you always going to have these these black people that's going to defend these culture vultures no matter what. They're going to go against guys like me at all costs. And then when they're proven, proven wrong and a guy like me is proven right, then all of a sudden they either want to be quiet or they just have some funny look on their face. Or they go try to find the next one and make excuses justifying, you know, this other one trying to, you know, do black music or do... You know what I'm saying? The black form of entertainment. So it is what it is, man. I'm out.